Hi guys, welcome back. I'm me, you're you, and this is the Haunted Sky. Um, hopefully, uh, you watched uh, myself and John Edmonds Cosma uh, have a wonderful discussion over on uh, Bang Productions Television, and uh, I felt it was a great interview. I really enjoyed it, and I felt like I was able to get a lot of things out that um, ordinarily, maybe I don't just because I get kind of distracted, pulled one way or another, but he really helped me, uh, focus on some really great points through just an organic kind of conversation. And I really enjoyed it. So I hope you got a chance to watch that. If not, please uh, check the link in the community section that I have posted and, um, you can, uh, watch the interview for yourself and maybe come away with a few things that, uh, maybe are helpful, you know? Um, I had one thing, just one, uh, kind of thing I wanted to talk about. Um, and it came, I was, uh, I was looking for something. I think it was a, a picture or an image or something. And I, I typed in gray alien. That's just all I typed in. And the first thing that popped up in the search was Wikipedia and, uh, Wikipedia has gray aliens categorized as folklore, even though thousands of people have recorded interactions with them with corroborating evidence and anything which has multiple witnesses and corroborating evidence is not folklore. It is fact. Okay. Have you ever seen something that other people haven't seen? Like, have you ever seen a bear? I have. I saw a bear once. But prove it. I mean, imagine that you don't have a camera strapped to your head 24 hours a day and you see something that you don't have a photograph of. How would you convey that to another person? Right. Well, that's exactly what I've done. And that's exactly what thousands upon thousands of people have done, countless others. And we've done it so much over the years that we actually have a composite description of these beings. Um, and, and so you have to ask yourself, what are the odds of millions of people all imagining or lying about the same thing for decades, for centuries, for millennia? I, I would say none. And, and at a certain point, we have to accept the truth based on the sheer weight of the numbers alone, right? When you see cave paintings, for instance, um, do you think that they were imagining the antelopes, right? No, they drew what they saw, right? And and they did a good enough job of conveying it that even thousands of years later, when we see the cave paintings, we go, oh, that's an antelope. So we can recognize it. And what I can tell you is what these beings look like, what their craft looked like. I have pictures of their craft. I have video of their craft. I have recollections of my experiences and the tokens they have given me. It's not folklore. More of a lifestyle, really. No, we who are interested in conveying the truth are the ones who are constantly obstructed by asterisks. <laughs> you understand? Everything has to come with an asterisk or a disclaimer. Uh, you know, and all these all these little games um, that people have to play. These psychological games of semantics and 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 hedging bets that I find to be uh, fascinating, but also at the same time very frustrating. You know, because I'm tired of my reality being called, uh, you know, folklore. It's not folklore. It's happening to me. Do you think that this image on this backdrop behind me is based on imagination or is it based on fact? You know, we have uh, this, this unerring ability to deny our own reality to our expense, unfortunately. And, and you know, we go back thousands of years and we say, oh, well, we could see how they did this and we can see how di they did that. And we can see that those beings, oh, that's imaginary. Why, why do human beings do that? Why do we assume that part of our recorded history is true and part of it is imaginary? 
You say, well, you'd have to say to yourself, well, if, if these gods who came down out of the sky are imaginary, then maybe this other stuff is imaginary too. Or would you take the other tact and say, if all this stuff they're saying is real, why isn't the rest of it real? It, from a certain perspective from a certain context. I'm not saying that these beings were gods. They're, they weren't gods. I'm saying they were, they were to these primitive humans, they were gods. They were like gods to them. What else could you compare them to when your greatest invention is the wheel and you see these things floating in the air and coming down in beams of light and have all this knowledge and this amazing kind of show? I mean, look at the light show. That's an amazing show. Now imagine 2,000 years ago seeing that, 5,000, 10,000 years ago. How would you interpret it when you have no scientific context in which to base it? Well, you'd have to base it in uh, superstition. When you don't have science to, to lean on, you have to lean on superstition now. And you have to say, these are gods and these are angels and this is the the you know, the spirit of God, when really what it was is someone talking in your head because you don't know what telepathy is, but you say, and the Lord moved upon me. You see, and, and it's and it's these type of misunderstandings that create this continuance of superstition. And, um, oh, hi, Chris. Hi, Garrett. Thanks for being here. Nice to see you. Um, hey, let me read a couple comments. John really got into your head and it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. John did a great job, didn't he? It was a very easy exchange and, and he has a, a wonderful manner about him. Um, that, that kind of puts you at ease. And, and he, you know, he was like, I'm going to let you talk. Like, I'm not going to cut you off. Like, I'm not going to do that. Like uh, he saw a couple other people kind of wanted to cut me off a little bit, not to be rude, but just because they were like, oh, I want to ask this or ask that. And he let me just lay it out the way that, uh, you know, I kind of like to do it. And he was very good at doing that. Hello, Star Trek introduced me to this concept too. What concept is that, Garrett? Is it is it that of the gods of the, the, the concept of higher technology meeting non-technological people? I, that's what I got out of Star Trek. Um, you know, the, uh, what, what do they call it? Prime directive where they don't interfere. Oh, yeah, we have a, we have a special guest, everybody. Look, it's my Sphinxy. It's my bad boy. Oh my gosh. It's my bad boy. Look at him. Bad boy. That's a bad boy right there. Look at him knocking stuff over. Just being bad. He's being bad. Good. He's being a bad boy. All right. Don't like it. Good. Um, but, uh, you know, we have these concepts that, you know, we we don't forgive ourselves, right? Yeah, the original Star Trek series introduced Apollo as an extraterrestrial, among others who were perceived as gods. Uh, by the way, I love your cat and Marvel chair. Oh, well, thank you. I love my cat and my Marvel chair, too. <laughs> thank you. I have a, a few little precious items in my life and... and um, uh, my, I have four cats. Um, I have a calico, uh, I have a, a ginger, uh, I have a Bengal and I have a Sphinx. Yeah. So collect the whole set if you can. Um, and they're a huge pain in my ass, but I love them to death. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we, even if you look at, um, what was the one what was the Star Trek where they went actually looking for God, right? Remember that one where they actually went looking for God and it wasn't a God. It was a, it was an alien species that was ancient, that was powerful, that was power hungry and looking for a way in, right? And so it, it really was a kind of a cautionary tale, you know? Oh, and to be technical, my my chair is a Marvel chair, but it's the Iron Man Marvel chair. Let me see. Um, but yeah, so we have these kinds of stories that permeate our culture, that warn us, that kind of people uh, who have seen beyond the veil 
have tried to kind of put that down for us and say, not every being is benevolent. Uh, these creatures that were experienced by our ancient and primitive cultures were perceived as gods, but today we would not call them that. See, back then they called them angels. Today, I don't think we would call them that. Uh, back then they called them demons. I don't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't call them that today because they didn't have a scientific classification to place anything in. How do you determine what people are saying when they have no scientific baseline, they have no scientific vocabulary, they have no scientific knowledge or experience? How do you now take that and run with it and say that must be the facts? I think today, if you were to uh, stand up whatever it was they saw, in front of us, we would have a very, a very different interpretation of what we were seeing, right? Like, for instance, just like, just like uh, Eric von Daniken, the chariots of the gods. What were they saying? The conveyance of these advanced species, right? That's that's all they were saying, but they had to say it in the only way they knew how. What was the most advanced form of transportation back then? The chariot. It was the fastest and the coolest. Thing, right, that they had. However, it wasn't really a chariot, but it was meant to, to symbolize a conveyance, the, the most highest advanced conveyance you could imagine of the highest, most advanced beings that they had ever encountered. And, and so this is what um, the, the problem that we've been facing for a millennia, really, is we keep thinking that what these people had placed in superstitious terms is a, is a correct uh, interpretation or description of reality. They weren't lying. They weren't. Uh, they were just simply unable to capture in words or in terms that could be universally understood what it was they were experiencing. And I think that they did an admirable job of trying to do so. But we have this game of grapevine, don't we, that goes on for 2,000 years that we read, or longer, that we read in, in the Bible and things like that. But we don't go back. We don't go back to the originals, the OGs, the Sumerians, who talk about the Anunnaki, who talk about those who from the heavens came down to earth. We don't talk about their histories. Those are assumed to be imaginary, right? They're, they're, they're made up. They're, they're uh, you know, just made up stories with, uh, with a point to them or something like, like Aesop's fables. When the truth is, they were telling us exactly what happened to them. They were telling us exactly what they were told. And what did the Anunnaki tell the Sumerians? That they created us. They created the first man, Adamu, the Adamu. And don't you think it's funny that the name of that the Sumerians gave to men, the first man was called Adamu. And the first man in the Bible is called Adam. You see. And let's see. You're so sweet to your furry babies. <laughs> yeah, I dote on them because they're, you know, I don't have any children. So they're my kids, you know, and I dote on them and we get, I get mad at them sometimes. I get frustrated with them, but we all end up in a big pile on my chair at the end of the night, you know, and I hear them running around right now being bad, but you know, they're good kids. I love them. But, um, you know, we, we go back, we only go back so far in our history. Like we say, well, oh, the Anunnaki, what? That was all made up by the Sumerians. You mean they took the time to create a language, to create these clay tablets, to create cuneiform, to create the stylus, to do all these things, to write down fairy tales? Do you think that the cave paintings were also imaginary, that these, that these cavemen were imagining antelopes? Or do you say, well, no, they were putting down what they saw because what you see is is the most important thing it's your history and it and it's uh, it's a very human thing isn't it that we always record our history right and so 
the Sumerians wrote down their history. The, the Egyptians wrote down their history when they said that they did things a certain way. Well, I believe them. When, when they say that these beings came to visit them, I believe them. <laughs> Why doesn't anyone else? I mean, and you see the carryovers. You see the carryovers. That how, how these things get intertwined in the culture and in religions over time. I'll give you a perfect example, and, and I hope people don't get upset at me uh, for saying this, but it's just true. So people who pray, right, like uh, uh, Christian people who pray or whatever, at the end of their prayer, what do they say? Amen. Amen. Right? That's, that's how they end the prayer. Amen. And what they don't realize is that that is an Egyptian tradition. <laughs> um. And it is also the name of an Egyptian god, Amun-Ra. <laughs> Amun-Ra, the sun god. Amun-Ra. And so it was, a, it was part of the Egyptian tradition because they had so many gods, right? That if you said a prayer, you would have to say who the prayer is to. So that god would receive that prayer. And, and so at the end of the prayer you would say to amen, right? To amen. This prayer is to amen, to amen Ra. But Christians who pray and say amen at the end of it are carrying on this tradition from Egypt from thousands of years ago, before the Christian Bible was written. Before Jesus of Nazareth walked the planet, they were praying to Amun-Ra, and they were using this prayer structure where they would formulate their prayer, and then they would say Amen to Amen at the end of it, so that God would receive that prayer. Let me see. Do you believe in feline extraterrestrials? It may be far-fetched, but I believe our earthly house cats are descendants of that. Yeah, they have a name, right? What is it? The lot it's something like lion lion. Lion. Ah, I can't remember what they're called. But yeah, I believe that there is a um there is a species that is um cat-like, and I certainly hope to meet one of their females one day. <laughs> um but uh uh I believe that there are many different types. I think we'd be surprised, you know, how um, uh, similar that some of these species might be with things that we associate with them. Uh, for instance, we have ones that they used to um, um, uh, talk about there are ones that are like insectoid, right? We we have ones that are cat-like. We have the Nordics. We have the small grays. We have ones that we associate with different things for different reasons. And um, I certainly think that it is entirely possible. I've never met one, uh, but I don't think that it's out of the realm of possible for one of these beings or one type of being to have what we would associate with feline physical characteristics. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility at all. But after I watched the Island of Dr. Moreau, I would love to meet one of these cat girls. <laughs> They're cute. Um, let's see. Um, I used to have random cats just appear in my house and decide to live there. Insist on coming in and live with me till they passed. I miss that. Haven't any, haven't had any come to my house in a while. Yeah, I don't, uh, I've, I've actually rescued a couple of cats like that that just showed up and said, Hey, you seem awesome. Help me. And, you know, we rescue them, find them homes or adopt them, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's a nice feeling, right? When something just shows up and says, this is home here, right? That's a nice feeling. And that means you have good energy. You know, you have a good trustable energy. I attract strays. I <laughs> that's what I do. You know, I attract all the strays in the world and, uh, they all come and and uh, they want to be part of the show, right? Just like my 
my guy back there, Laszlo. Um, but, uh, you know, I so appreciate uh, the folks who are being real supportive of me about telling my story and um, getting a lot of attention lately. Uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, as a matter of fact, there is going to be another video drop by Bang Productions, which is, I guess, is another part of the interview that we did. They kind of split it up because we were we talked for quite a while, a couple of hours. And I noticed that this video was only about an hour. And I think that they have another video that's going to drop tomorrow. Um, so if you haven't subscribed to that channel, please do so. Make sure you hit their notification bell. So when that video drops tomorrow, that you don't miss it. Um, and then uh, also tomorrow, I'm going to be um, on a, a channel on a podcast called The Way 126 Experience uh, with a person named Shan Chi. Uh, very cool guy. Um, and uh, they they hit me up out of the blue and said, we we heard about your story and we've just got to have you on and and talk to you and get some more information. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, and also I want you to know I'm doing a fundraiser for, uh, the polygraph. I want to take a polygraph about my experiences and I want to prove beyond any reasonable doubt that what I am saying is the absolute 100% truth. No exaggeration. I'm, I don't need to. What's happened is incredible enough. I don't need to gild the lily uh, uh, in order to uh, convey these things to you. I, I know they're amazing, and they need they need no extra no extra icing on them. Um, so uh, on four twenty, peace. Uh, I'm going to be doing a fundraising live stream. And if you go to uh, buy me a coffee at the Haunted Sky, I'll put a link in there. Um, and you can find that also in uh, the uh, channel links in the channel description. Uh, if you make a donation, uh, uh, I think one, three or five dollars. I try to keep it very reasonable because I want people to participate. Um, you can ask, put in the comments when you make the donation, ask your question, put your name in there. And I will read your question and answer it live on the live stream on 420. Uh, after my podcast, after I do the podcast of uh, the typical skeptic podcast with Rob Khalil, friend of, friend of the channel, awesome guy, and uh, somebody who I like very much. Um, and so I'm going to be back on his show uh, on 420 uh, talking about the upcoming uh, lecture, my inaugural uh, show of the lecture series, Einstein Who, which is going to be happening in Harrisburg on April 27th um, at the uh, Whitaker Center Cinema uh, in downtown Harrisburg. It's going to be an amazing time. Um, if you are somewhere close to the area and you'd like to attend, go find the link and get the tickets. Um, and uh, I, I have a link for that as well, I believe, uh, for you guys. Um, do you have a backup plan in case the lie detector fails? They can't always be reliable. Still, that doesn't make me believe you any less. I'll donate next month. Well, thank you, Gary. Um, is there a backup? I mean, I don't know what a backup is for that, but I feel very confident, extremely confident that I'm going to pass that polygraph. There's no, and here's the thing is I'm going to take the polygraph and I'm going to film it and I'm going to publish the results, whatever the results are. Uh, I, In fact, it would be awesome if people who donate to the live stream could think of a question to ask me that they would like to see asked during the polygraph that they might think is important or pertinent to the subject to further the education on the topic of the reality of alien abductions. Um, but yeah, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. I, I, I really want to get this out here because when you see all of the evidence I've accumulated, uh, drawings, photographs, videos, uh, I mean, even uh, what, uh, as short as a week ago, uh, stuff is really going off right now. 
And then you see, you know, I, I have all the recollections of these experiences. I have tokens they have given me. I have messages that I've been given that I could tell you about that I had no way. There's no way I could dream up some of this stuff. Um, I just don't have that type of imagination. You know, I'm pretty direct and literal person. I have my creative moments, but not when it comes. This is stuff I couldn't even dream up. Um, so. Uh, we have a lot of big things, a lot of momentum right now, and I'd like to welcome everybody who's in the live right now. Thank you for being here. Please drop me a like, drop a subscribe if you haven't already, and, and become a part of this because this is a movement that is picking up steam, and it's not going to be the Pentagon. It's not going to be another committee. Uh, it's It's going to be us, I have to tell you. It's up to us to save us. <laughs> yeah. The government isn't going to save us. Um, where can I donate again? Oh. Um, let's see. Hold on just a second. There we go. Uh, if you go to... Um, buy me a coffee. Look in the, there's a, I think there's, I put a link in the channel description is buy me a coffee um, at uh, four slash the haunted sky. And uh, you'll, and it should come right up and you'll see, the, I'll, I'll say what it's for. And then uh, it gives you like a, an option of one, three or $5, I think that you can donate. And each donation is is able to ask a question so let's say if you had three questions you can make three small donations if you'd like or whatever and i'll um i'll answer i'll answer if if everybody just donated one dollar and asked a question i will answer 1200 questions if i have to uh because this is really important to me um but i you know i i don't know if that i have a backup plan i mean my backup plan is evidence like beneath the haunted sky, the, the evidence for alien abduction. There is there is not a not a misspoken word in that title. Uh, I have the evidence. That's the other thing. You know, I was talking to uh, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day uh, about this, and I thought, you know, what we should do is, you know, instead of waiting for another committee, instead of uh, listening to the Pentagon blow us off again. What if somebody like me just sued the federal government, just sued the shit out of them for dereliction of duty, for ignoring the evidence and allowing people like me to be taken out of my sovereign nation, to be taken out of my own home due to a lack of their security because of their denial of this topic? Yeah. And then produce all of my evidence to a jury in public. You can see it. Look at this picture. Look at that picture. Is that a weather balloon? Look at the stones they gave me. I will tell you what they said to me. I will tell you what they did to me. And I don't know that you're going to want to hear it, but it's certainly going to go a long way toward making the government have a completely different stance on this topic. What we, and thank you, Garrett. I appreciate you too. I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much. Um, but we, what if we just sued them for incompetence? Like if you don't know that they're here, you're not doing your job. If you don't see the craft that I have pictures of, if you want to lie, when I have a picture I witnessed a cigar-shaped UFO hovering right over Red Pad Air Force Base and being chased around by airplanes. And I have a picture of the craft, and I was standing less than a quarter of a mile from Wright Pat when I took it. And I watched your planes get clowned on by something from another planet. Well, then you are being disingenuous. You are being derelict in your duty to protect the citizens of this country. And you should be held accountable for that. Um, I feel like what we need to do is we need to take the fight to them. I'm not asking for disclosure. I'm disclosing and I'm going to force them to accept this disclosure. 
you're going to accept it and you're going to deal with it, whether you like it or not, whether you want to or not, it doesn't matter. I'm a citizen of this country and I've been thrown in the garbage. I have been left to the wolves. Hmm? And I came back. You should be afraid because now I know way too much to be quiet. I have far too much evidence to be called crazy. You can call me crazy. Hey, Bernie. Hey, nice to see you again. Hello from San Diego. Hello from Pennsylvania. Um, but we have far too much evidence. And I'm not the only one. I'm just like, I have really good evidence. I have a long history of these beings. I have some unique um, contributions that I feel like I can make to the effort of disclosure and the education of our public. And this is what's most important. You know, as much as I harp on physics and physicists, and I do at length, whether you like it or not, but most of you seem to like it, um, is the lack of education. Yeah. My people suffer from a lack of knowledge, a lack of wisdom. What if people see a UFO and they think it's okay to just walk right up to the damn thing? Ask Travis Walton if that's a smart idea. But imagine that he had been educated by the government who said, if you see something like this, go the other way. Call the authorities, leave the area, do not engage, right? Um, this guy censors comments. That's how you can tell he is low IQ. You know who doesn't think I'm low IQ? Mensa. <laughs> and I don't censor comments. I just don't allow jerks in my chat. There's a difference between censoring and boundaries. And if you want to go over my boundaries, I will spank you. This isn't a city fucking public forum where you could just come in and say whatever bullshit you want to me. This is my house. And when you're in my house, you need to have some manners or you will be shown the door. Boundaries is not censorship. Okay. You want to go have your say and then go get on Twitter, bro. Go run me down someplace else. There's the entire internet that you have to run me down, but you want to come here and say something negative to me. Well, good luck with that. I don't think so. Um, so anyway, to get back on the topic, and by the way, I, I love trolls. It's so easy because you're just one click away from being booted. Like I just go, oh, click, click, and then you're gone. And then we're back to having fun again. Um, but, you know, we, what we need is a public education um, put in place where people know, do not engage these craft. Do not, <laughs> if you can help it, uh, try to be around these craft or these beings because they are uh, they can be highly dangerous and unpredictable because we don't know enough about them to risk ourselves or our families or things like that, you know. And so we need people to be aware, not just of what to do and what not to do, but first we have to get them over the hump of they exist, right? It's not even a matter of debate anymore. You say, oh, well, I'd love to have evidence. Well, what do you define as evidence? Give me your scientific baseline for this. And it has to be something which is reasonable. For instance, people who say that we haven't proven the existence of aliens or UFOs, well, then prove the existence of lightning. Please. What, you've seen lightning? Ah, bullshit. Could have been anything. You misidentified, right? Um. Well, I have pictures of lightning. Well, I have pictures of UFOs. Well, we have videos of lightning. Well, I have videos of UFOs. Well, we have people who have been struck by lightning. I've been abducted. How far do you want to go down this trail before you realize the evidence tracks? And the evidence doesn't just track with me. I'm not the only person on earth being abducted. There are a, about, at any given time, about 20 million of us on this planet. Now, that seems like a really big number. But when you break down how uh, small a percentage that is based on the worldwide population of eight plus billion people, 20 million is a very small sample. So they keep the sample low enough as to not spook the rest of the herd. Do you understand? And then it's the government's job to sweep whatever spooks the cattle under the rug. 
right? And to say, go on about your lives, nothing to see here. There's no evidence. Try to get on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. You know what? That's a good idea. I should try to do that. Oh, wait, shit. I forgot. I was already on there like a month and a half ago. You can go look it up. Um, there's a uh, part of the uh, interview, which I was so happy to do, by the way. Um, it was, it's called, uh, ranchers, wranglers, and rustlers. If you, if you go like, look it up on coast to coast AM's, um, YouTube page, you can hear part of that interview. If you go over to coast to coast AM and you become a coast to coast, uh, insider, I get nothing for saying that by the way, um, that you actually can go into the archives and I have four different interviews that I, I've been on coast to coast four times. And, uh, uh, the last time. That I was on there. Uh, I actually was talking to George about my book Beneath the Haunted Sky, and it was an amazing time and one of my favorite interviews that I have ever done because I've always wanted to talk to George about these experiences and, and see what questions he would ask me and things like that, you know. So that and by the way, it was a great uh it was a great suggestion. I just I've already done it. <laughs> so make sure you look it up and uh Make sure that you watch the uh, one we just did on Bang Productions. Uh, I guess they're going to drop another one tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll be on the Way 126 experience with Sean Ching, where I'll be doing another interview on his podcast. Um, and then uh, I don't really, I don't guess I have anything until 420, where I'll be back on the Typical Skeptic podcast with Rob Khalil, friend of the show friend of the program, friend of the channel, and friend to abductees. And uh, he's been so supportive of me. He even announced my uh, lecture for the Einstein Who tour that's uh, kicking off in uh, 27th of next month. And uh, we got a lot of momentum right now. So if there's a show that you'd like for me to be on, let them know that you'd like to have me on. I do have some time between now and uh, the 20th that I can do some of these. If you drop a like, if you drop a subscribe, if you'd share some of this stuff with other people, I would really appreciate it because that's how we've gotten this far. It hasn't been big advertising. I'm not a brand, right? I'm just a guy, but it is the, the grassroots. It's the folks like you who said, go listen to this guy. You got to hear this. Watch this video. Listen to what he says about that. Oh, that's a good point. Look at what he shows. You know what I mean? And and it's that it's that um, that talk about it that gets other people to come and find out for themselves, you know, what's really going on. Um, I had I got a little surprise for you. OK, I was going to save this until the live stream, but I don't want to save it till next month. You guys have been so awesome to me that I would very much like to give it to you now. OK, would you like a would you like a gift? Yeah, Let's see. What I, find. What I do. With it. Ah, there we go. So I have a drawing, uh, an another drawing that I have done which was based on uh, one of my experiences. All right. And it was during this time when I, when it was being explained what I was, what, what was going on, what their agenda is, what their goals are, what they're doing and why they're doing it. And he didn't just tell me this being took me around and showed me some things. And I'm going to show you what I saw. And one of the things I saw that they showed me was this. This is, they showed me one of their young in a, um, I, I don't know what this is, like a little incubation tank, like a little, I don't know what it was, but it was full of this like yellowish green fluid in this kind of canister um, that was on this kind of bench-like table. And the canisters were, about, let's see, I could do this on camera, about yay big, about this big around. Um, and they had like a top 
on the uh, on the little incubation chamber, and and it had these lines that were plugged into the bench itself. There seemed to be some kind of line, like they could add or take thing. I don't know what I don't know what the purpose of it was, but it struck and it had like an umbilical cord coming from it and it went up to the top of this canister and then out of the canister came these lines that looked like uh they looked like small metal pipes like piping and and these went into the back of the bench and uh on the side uh, on the bench on the, the back wall of this bench there were lights that looked like numbers or measurements or some type of way of like monitoring um, the little the little doer that was in there um, and this the, and what he showed me and explained was this is how we have to this is how we have to uh, grow our young that they have to like grow them like in these canisters because the females can't carry them to term because the females are so teeny tiny now that they can't really carry them to full term that the men, the males of the species uh, are often born sterile or without uh, genitalia and things like this. So they have to grow them in these little incubation chambers and that they have to go to quite some trouble to do this. Um, and, that was when he explained that evolution is no longer their friend, that they are evolving actually to the point of extinction. And one of the reasons that they are abducting us and people like me is because they want to use our genetics to combine with and thus kind of turn back the clock on evolution several million years while strengthening their species and not really losing anything um, from from their own genetic line. Uh, let's see, they need a mother's warmth and heartbeat. Oh, they're, they're um, I understand what you're saying from the, from the, the uh, carrying of them and things like that, but you would be surprised how absolutely um, uh, relentlessly protective they are of their young. They uh, love them very much. We, we wouldn't see it that way. I think the way we would interpret their behavior is different than how humans are, but also similar in some ways that they are extremely protective, extremely vigilant when it comes to the protection of their young and of each other. And the females are the vicious ones. <laughs> the males are very kind of... Uh, uh, non-emotional very just direct about the females are the ones who are kind of they're the lionesses they are the oh that's what they are that's what the cat people are called the lyrans right they're called the lyrans l-y-r-a-n-s i think that's right is that right garrett the lyrans when they have like lion like features but anyway these these gray these small grays the females are absolutely one hundred percent vicious when it comes to they take they have a zero risk policy, which as I explained before in in one of the videos where I they actually had me meet one of one of these little guys that came from me, and they came from me and this. Uh, small gray female and you could tell that she was very hesitant in me meeting them because humans are unpredictable would you bring your little guy into a gorilla cage like no probably not and if you did you would have a weapon trained on him the entire time if you so much as twitch i'm gonna put you down right now that isn't what happened um but uh, what happened was actually very cool. It was a misunderstanding on my part. Uh, but uh, when, when she brought him in, I just ran up and just hugged the little guy. I didn't even wait. There was no talking, no nothing. I saw him. I knew he was mine. And I just ran to him and, and loved him up. I just hugged him and, and 
told him, you know, that I loved him. And, and then I think that she, she saw I was becoming extremely emotional. And I think that she, what they were upset about was that I wasn't going to let him leave. That's what they were. That's what they were like. You know, he, he can't stay. He can't stay, which I understood. I understood that. And I wasn't going to do anything to prevent that, but they were just going to make sure that I, that I was going to let them leave. And so she boop, kind of, I just felt something tap me on the back of the head and then blackness. And then I woke up in my bed. Uh, but I got to meet one of the little guys. And so I, I know what they're doing and believe me, their mothers love them very much. Um, they are not that, different from us in that way um oh my god i've been talking for 45 minutes you guys uh i can't believe you let me go on this long but i'm having a really good time talking to you and i'm so glad that you're here um we are building a really good little community here i think and you know and the couple of jerk faces who's big ugly faces as dumb as a butt and they want to come in here and cause travel like click click gone gone and then it's like it's nice right and uh, but we get very little of that i i have been very surprised actually at how little of that um we've gotten on this channel because people have been coming in with such a positive attitude with genuine uh curiosity and interest in this subject that they um you know, some people have actually validated some of my experience, said, you know what you're talking about on this. And, and I appreciate that because it all comes from the heart. There, there's no scam here. I don't have an app to sell you. Sorry. I can't teach you how to communicate with aliens with your brain through an app for $9.99 like Stephen Greer. Um, and I don't pretend to know everything. OK, I don't. I, tr I, tr I try to know as much as I can. I try to tell you everything I know. But I know that at a certain point, that's going to fall short. It's going to be insufficient to all the questions that you have. It falls short of all the questions I have. That's how I know. But I feel like if I didn't tell you, if I didn't share with you everything that I know, I'm robbing you. And I'm robbing myself because now I went through all these things and I have this information and I'm going to do what with it? Nothing. Of course, I'm going to tell you. Right? Right. But I'll only ever tell you what I really know. And if I don't, I'll just say I don't know. You know, and there are other people besides myself who have had these experiences who and it's almost like we've all been kind of been given a small piece of the puzzle, all different kinds. And we have to come together and put all of these pieces together to get the full picture, really, of what we're looking at. But what we have to understand is that these pieces are important even just the individual pieces but when you put them together and you start making sense of it all now now we have a much broader vision and a much broader concept of what it is we're dealing with and this is reality ufo abduction is a reality alien abduction is a reality extraterrestrial craft are a reality you're gonna have to get your mind wrapped around reality okay and I'm trying to help you do that by giving you the real facts and not pie in the sky stuff, not trying to, you know, scam or, or be greasy, you know, anything like that. Let's see, Yvette. I'm sorry if this is a duplicate. I'm new to this. Wanted to thank you for putting yourself out here. I heard you on coast, bought your book, loved it. And I love your lightning analogy. Oh, thank you very much. And thank you for buying the book. And, and thank you for being here and just saying that. That means a lot to me. Thank you, Yvette. I, it's very important. You know, when you put you when you do put yourself out there and you it's tough because, you know, you're going to hear like some of the like some of the trolls and stuff that are out here. They always have something mean to say to you when you're being as vulnerable and benevolent as humanly possible. Somebody has something negative to say. So when people recognize that I'm putting myself out here, I'm being very vulnerable with you. I'm telling you something that like people get made fun of for people make fun of you. 
But then when you start applying logic and you start throwing logic back at them, you notice that stuff shrivels up real fast, right? Like all that, like the lightning analogy. It's like, you want to, you want to tell me I need to prove something. How about you point that, that same uh, standard at yourself and see what you can do with it. You couldn't prove to me you saw a bear in the woods. If you saw a bear in the woods, I'd be like, okay, how do you, how do I know that that's what you really saw? Well, I, I'll show you, I can draw it. I'll write it down. Oh, well, that could be anything. Oh, you know, you know what I mean? And it's like, they, they want, they, they don't want to apply the same standards to themselves that they do to others. And it's simply a, a psychological rejection really of, of a truth that they're not ready to accept. And I want to help people accept it because the quicker we accept this, the quicker we can move on it as a species. Yeah, people don't want to hear things that shake their paradigms. That's right. That's that well said. People have a psychological rejection. It's not an intellectual one. You see, it looks like one. It looks like that person isn't very smart if that's what you No, it's not based on intellect. It's based on fear. It's based on emotion, right? And how do we motivate people or demotivate people into doing things? We do it through fear. Yes. And so what I want to do is help people get over their fear by informing them. The more information you have about something, the less you have to fear. Now, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be wary. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be cautious. What it means is, is that you're going to go into it more informed. You have a foothold on the subject. So it, it can help alleviate that psychological discomfort that comes along with something that seems so big and so overpowering that if you can make sense of it a little bit, well, then it becomes a little less scary, doesn't it? And that's what I want to do. I want to educate people so when they see one of these craft, they go, yep, that's one of them. I'm going to go this way. I don't want to be, you know, involved. Or if you are, then I want you to do what I've done. I want you to remember as much as you can. I want you to record everything you can. I want you to grab any evidence. I want you to make drawings. I want you to keep a journal. I want you to add your piece of the puzzle to this giant picture that we call the reality of alien abduction. Okay. I love you guys. And I'm so proud of you for being here. And thank you for your likes, your subscribes, your shares, for following me around from podcast to podcast to podcast, for buying my book, for reading the book. That's, I love when people buy the book, but if you don't read it, you, you wasted your money. You need to read the book. Okay. And you can get it uh, in either uh, you can get it in Kindle or you can get it in paperback. I've noticed most people, even though the paperback's more expensive, they're getting it because I have giant eight and a half by 11 close up photographs. Of, uh, hey, Woo Rider, what's going on? Nice to see you. Um, so they have giant photographs of up close pictures. Um, that I think people are going to, that people want, they're going to want for themselves. They're almost good enough to like cut out and frame and hang up. I, I chose the very best of what I have out of my, uh, what 20 or 17 or 20 years of collecting photographs and evidence. Um, since kind of like the digital pho photograph has kind of come about, it's been much easier. Um, how's it going? It's going great. Uh, I'm really glad that you're here. And I think that uh, we're picking up a lot of momentum and a lot of steam. So it, it, things are going great. Uh, let's see, you help, Garrett, uh, you help me feel like I can be brave if I encountered one of them. Thank you for everything. Take lots of care for it. Thank you. You too. Um, be brave. Be brave. You know, being brave doesn't mean not being afraid, right? Right. You see, um, I, I like I was talking on uh, the the latest podcast with uh, John Cosmo on Impressed podcast. We were talking about superheroes and stuff. Right. And I was telling him how I felt about 
like Green Lantern. Green Lantern, right? I even have a Green Lantern ring. I usually wear it. I don't have it on right now. But, uh, and, and it was a cover I saw that had Green Lantern, and he was defending Green Arrow. It was the Green uh, Lantern, Green Arrow team-up series, which I loved. And he's defending Green Arrow, and he's got like a shield around him. And I see him, and he's pointing his ring at Sinestro. And Sinestro wields the yellow ring of fear. Right. And I'm looking at this comic book and I, I, I see this picture and it made such an impression on me that I realized right there in front of me is the whole ball game. That fear is the enemy of will. Mm -hmm. But will, if it is applied, is the strongest force in the universe. Yeah. How do we manifest? We do not manifest out of our fear. We manifest out of our will. Yes. And I saw as a 12-year-old boy laying on the floor of his bedroom looking at a comic book that fear is the enemy of will. We do not need to. You can be afraid and not lose your will. That is what bravery really is. Even if you're afraid, do not lose your will. That's my that's my advice. Uh, let's see, I'll do a couple more questions and then I'm going to get going. Okay, guys. I love you guys for being here. This is so much fun. This is so much fun. You know, I used to kind of, um, kind of dread doing these honestly, cause I'm autistic and I'm not a big fan of people all the time, <laughs> but I have been having so much fun tonight talking to you guys and discussing these topics because I feel like it, I don't know if it's the timing. I don't know if there's a, a, a shift like how John was talking about a, a 3d into a 5d reality. But I have noticed that people are now starting to come to me. I get emails. I get, I get messages. I get all kinds of stuff from people now who are like, I want more. I want more. I want more. Right. And I love it. And I'm here for it. Um, question. Why is Danny Sheehan lying about photos? He has a craft with symbols. When approached to show, he said he no longer has them. I don't know who Danny Sheehan is. I'm sorry. Uh, lying about photos he had crashed with someone on approach to show. He said he no longer has them. Um, why is this always the case? Well, it is not always the case because I published an entire book <laughs> that has tons of photographs. And it does include some symbols that I have seen in connection with my abductions, with these craft and with these beings. I hand drew them out because it's the only way I, I have. But it is not always the case. <laughs> not in my case, anyway. And I, I kind of, but I do know what you're saying, though, because I have, I think maybe that's why, uh, maybe that's why I did it. Maybe that's why I wanted to do it so much is because I have often had that same frustration that you have of why don't people just say it, let it out, show it and tell what they have. You know, I think sometimes people get um, intimidated. They get afraid. They hear the men in black stories or the government's coming to get you stuff, uh, you know. And so this creates a type of uh, psychological fear or dread of the possibility of there being consequences. And I say that if there's going to be consequences for me simply saying what happened to me, he, you're going to blame the victim? You're going to punish the victim? Well, I got to tell you, if you're going to come here, if you're going to come up in my house and try to intimidate me to tell me I can't, I'm a victim of something and I'm not allowed to talk about it, that I can't tell people simply what happened and warn them of the same thing, I'm afraid we're going to have a conversation you're not going to enjoy. <laughs> you know, and I am 100% fully prepared in every way to defend myself. And I want to tell you this. Um, <laughs> let's see. You are. Oh, I should. I should have clarified people in the big spotlight on ufology. Oh, okay. So I think I know what some of that is. Some of that is they're full of shit. Some of them. You ever notice like, and, and I, I kind of harp on the guy, but he kind of deserves it. Stephen Greer, like, he is a phony, man. Like, he's a phony. He's like, 
oh, look at these photos we took at this CE5 event. And what you see is a blurry, splotchy thing. And he's like, oh, and you can clearly see the alien. Like, I don't see anything. And I know what they look like. <laughs> and I don't see shit. And I can teach you how to talk to, uh, you know, aliens with your brain through an app on your phone that I'll sell you for $9.99. Like, come on, man. See, that's snake oil, bro. That's snake oil. Immediate. You know, um, you are the real deal. Oh, thanks, Bernie. I appreciate you. And I am. And I want to always convey that to people that this is there's zero uh, horseshit over here. Like, I don't play that. I tell the truth and I, I say what I know. I say what if I don't know. And that's how that that's the only way that we're going to be able to have knowledge and information that we can truly rely on to say that guy doesn't know everything, but what he knows, I want to learn. Right. And I've done that. You know, I want to do that with other people too. You know, I've been listening to, and I hope it doesn't turn you off, but I've been listening a lot to Billy Carson, you know, and Billy Carson, the stuff that he's been saying completely lines up with all the stuff that I've been told by these guys, that these guys have told me certain things about our history and about what they're doing and about how it happened. And, He's kind of he's really on the right track by going back and reading through the ancient text. He, he doesn't have the uh, that I know of the practical experience of abduction that I know of anyway. I've never heard him say that, but he is a, a very good historian and and researches some of these things. And what he is talking about in our history is exactly what these guys have told me, you know, Um Greer is the ultimate grifter. It's sad. Yes, it is sad because he's te he's leading people off the path of truth by doing this stuff, you know, um, and, and and he's doing everyone a disservice. He is hurting us by saying and doing these things and making this pretend show. And they re and the way he's able to do it, this is the part that gets me and what really motivates me to get out there is the fact that there isn't enough good information to be able to tell the difference between good information and his bullshit. So he gets away with it, you see? But there's a new day coming, isn't there? The new day is here. And people like me, and I'm going to encourage other people who are real like me to come out and show their evidence and talk about their experiences. And they are going to, we are going to be setting the standard for information. It's not going to be left up to the Stephen Greer's uh, it's not going to be left up to to these uh, charlatans, these grifters who are taking advantage of people's naivety on the subject. And we're going to be getting real and having real conversations about these real topics. And we're going to keep it absolutely 100, 100 percent of the time. OK, I wish the Tibetan text could be deciphered more. Only 10 percent so far. Yeah. Um, it's um, it's frustrating sometimes the rate at which we uh, grow or learn. It can be frustrating. But then we have these amazing quantum leaps sometimes, right? Like when, when I came out with my book, people who read the book were like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot, right? And it's like I'm giving you 40 years of my life compressed into 200 and some pages, and it's a lot. But it's all good stuff. It's all stuff that you can can take and put in there and keep and use later. They're tools. This information, they're tools for you to use for your own uh, benefit. You know, um, do you often receive telepathic messages? I'll save my questions for the polygraph, but that one came to mind. Um, not often. Uh, there have been instances, and and I guess technically it's telepathic, but the way that they do it, the way that I've experienced it, I'll say it like that, the way I've experienced it is like getting a download from a computer, right? Let's say you, you like a video, right? You want to know about, you're like, oh, how to do that. Click and you download the video, right? Now, when you click on that video, boom, it opens up. It's light, it's color, it's sound, it's motion. It's all of those things all at once, right? 
And that's how it is with them. It can be very challenging to, you get all this stuff like all at once, and then you kind of have to unpack it a piece at a time sometimes. And you have to kind of go through it slowly, much more slowly than you receive it. It's like a packet of information. It's not a thought. It is thoughts. <laughs> it is many types of information all wrapped up in this package that just, it, it's like your brain explodes when they, when they do it. It's, it's like, boom, fireworks, right? Like when I met um, that one being, he, he touched me and called me guardian and he explained what they, what they're doing. And when he said it to me, he only said one word, but it was like, guardian it was like whoa like i had never felt something like it was like it was like my whole body shook reverberated from this one word it was like thunder it was like thunder you know they're very powerful and one of the things that they uh struggle with is uh dumbing it down for us like he said one word, but when he said one word and he touched me, my brain exploded with all of these images and 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 conversations and understanding and 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 you know it, it was just oh I got the whole thing all at once and then you have to sit there and kind of pick at it a little bit at a time and, and digest the information much more slowly than you receive it. I like your attitude. I'm from Queens, New York. Yeah. Well, okay. I guess I guess I do have kind of a confrontational. I, I, I don't mean to be, but I'm just I'm direct, and I just I don't fucking play games. And like I'm just gonna tell you straight up, you know, because it's the only way I know how to be. Uh, there's something about um, my type of autism that I just don't have a much of a filter. I mean. If I think something's right to say, I'm going to say it <laughs> and consequences be damned that, you know, and I don't want to hurt people's feelings or like be mean or anything like that. But, you know, I, I just got to tell you the way it is. And don't you think that's the right way? You know, don't you think that's the right way? It's like taking off a Band-Aid. Do you want to sit there and pull every hair out of your leg or right off? Just pull it right off and you're fine. We'll blow out. You're fine. Right. But we got to get it done, you know, and we can't do this slow drip anymore because people like me are the collateral damage of that sandbagging technique. Uh, you know that it's great for other people to try to psychologically ignore them to this like you're lowering an old man into a hot bath. But but for people like me, there is a, 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 I feel a need of immediacy of we need to address this now. And it's gone on far too long. You know, and that's the thing. We're reaching the tipping point. I mean, you guys are the proof of that by you being here and liking, subscribing. You're buying the book. You're reading the book. You're telling other people I'm on all these podcasts. Uh, I'm going on a lecture tour like people are thirsty for this now and they're not going to take no for an answer. And since the government isn't going to tell us, then we have to save us. We have to do it. It's going to be people like me, people like you who are going to make this change. Some of us are going to do it by talking and others are going to do it by learning and listening and passing it forward, paying it forward. That's what we're trying to do here. Um, yes, I agree. Just the words are automatically implanted in your head. Same happens with me. So yeah, so I've had uh, a couple of different experiences. One is when I was awake I was conscious and with the being and he touched me and then I just got that download and it was just like, it was amazing. There's another way that I've experienced where uh, you, I would ask a question. I would see them out there. I know I would know I'm, it's going to happen. Um, and so I would think about a question before I went to sleep. I, I would ask them something, you know. I would get up to, I would wake up, I'd have the abduction marks, I'd have the abduction hangover feeling. I would wake up at 3 33 a.m. like and just sit up in bed like like I had the air knocked out of me or something. And then I would go and do my ritual, brush my teeth, wash my face, wash my hands, just 
drink all the water on, in the world. And when I woke up, I would just have the answer. I would just have the answer in my head. I would have the answer like I've known it my whole life. Even though I didn't know it last night, I would wake up knowing the information like I'd already known it. Like it was a memory rather than new information. They have some way of putting the information in your head like it's always been there. I find that very strange. But that, that's the two ways that I have experienced their uh, communication of concepts, information, answers, things like that. Um, so um, I've been going on for about an hour and 10 minutes. Tell you what, I'm going to go for, uh, yeah, like you're remembering. Yeah, it's like I'm remembering it instead of learning it. I, I don't, that's a weird feeling when you didn't know it last night, but now you wake up today and you feel like you've known it for a thousand years. I feel like what you're getting is that feeling of their brain because it comes from their mind and their mind has already known it. And so you get that secondhand feeling of memory rather than new information. And, and that's a guess. Okay. But that's all I can really do <laughs> when it comes to these things. Sometimes it's just kind of make my best guess as to what I feel like is going on. Um, so, uh, what, let me see, we got the way 126 tomorrow. Um, yeah. So, oh, the, uh, the polygraph thing, the fundraiser is buymeacoffee.com slash haunted sky. Okay. Buymeacoffee.com slash haunted sky. If you go over there and make a donation between any time between now and 420 in the comments, Write your name and write the question that you'd like me to answer live. And I will be answering it live at 420. I think I'm going to do the live at 11 p.m., which will be after the typical skeptic podcast with Rob Khalil. OK, and every uh, every cent that I get is going to be given toward uh, the fund for uh, raising the money for a polygraph test so I can be questioned about my experiences. And I can prove the legitimacy of my claims. This isn't folklore, guys. This is real. And I want you to know that because the more you realize that this is a real thing, the more psychologically, intellectually, and emotionally prepared you can be for when disclosure finally comes down. That it's going to be old hat to you. That you're, there's no adjustment needed. You've already made the adjustment because you have internalize that information from good sources, from trustable sources, from people who are legitimate, from people who don't um, exaggerate or change their story or try to spice it up, you know, or try to sell you an app to talk to aliens with your brain. When you talk to the, to the good guys, the white hats, then you're already prepared with the information you're going to need. And maybe you can be an asset to help educate others who will be struggling when this comes down um, collective consciousness that we have minimal access to until it's jogged for it. That's right. And, and you are becoming part of that collective consciousness because you have entered my world, right? My crazy UFO abduction world. And you have heard my very sane stories. I mean, these are just things that happen to me. What can I do about it besides tell you, right? And, People who have an ear, let them hear, right? If you have the mind that is prepared for this information, you're probably drinking it like water in the desert. You're probably thirsty for this and much more, you know? Uh, one of the things that I, I constantly hear, and I, and I am very happy about that, is that my manner of communicating this information is very refreshing because I'm just direct to the point. There's no show here. You know, it's, it is just what it is. Right. And it's so important for me to, to make sure that I convey that information in a true and real way that I would never try to mess that up by trying to be more than what I am. Uh, and thank you, RL. Hey, thank you, Chris. And thank all of you. Thank all of you for being here. 
you know, I have a lot of fans, but you know what? I'm I'm your fan. I'm your biggest fan right now because how brave, how cool, how smart are you guys that you didn't have to have it happen to you to believe it happening to me? You know, how how much more fair of a person can you be than that? That's that's the next generation. Those are the light workers. These are the people who are going to be the torchbearers of the next level of consciousness. And I, I can't thank you enough. I'm very grateful. Please make sure to pick up the book. If you do, read it. Okay? Get over on Amazon. Do I have a copy around? I don't even think I have a copy of my own book near me. Uh, but <laughs> pick up Beneath the Haunted Sky, The Evidence for Alien Abduction. Follow these podcasts. Uh, join the channel. Hit the notification bell. Stay informed. Please participate. Thank you so much. Everybody who came in today, like, who are we talking? We got Garrett. We got Chris. We got Bernie. We got uh, Garrett. We've got Yvette. Thank you, Yvette. Loved hearing from you and loved hearing uh, your experience with my work and what you thought of uh, the information that I'm giving you. Um, Woo Ryder, love, love seeing you here. Uh, who else? That's it. Okay. That's everybody who participated in the chat. But thank you for dropping your like. Thank you for subscribing to me. Thank you for following and staying up to date on this topic because there is no amount of committees <laughs> that is going to give you the information that you can get from this little old channel right here. Nobody in those committees have met these beings. They've never been aboard their craft. They have no photographs to show you. They have no video of them hanging around their house. You're talking to the guy. You're talking to the guy. And I will keep talking to you as long as you keep listening, okay? And I want you guys to have an amazing night. And thank you so much for being here with me. It really made my night, okay? So go have fun. Have a great evening. Take care of each other. And take care of somebody else. All right. Until I see you again. Keep looking up.